Okay. So uh, we've got Kristen here and she's doing the weighing out of the nutmeg. So she's going to tear the beaker there. Now what she isn't going to do is she isn't going, could you um, pretend almost to do what you shouldn't do? Okay, so this is what we don't want to see. We don't want to see this kind of thing happening, right? Yeah, so we don't want to see the nutmeg being added while it's on the balance because that's going to damage the balance. Stuff's going to end up on the balance and then underneath the pan. So Kristen is going to go ahead now and she's going to add nutmeg to the beaker while it's off the balance, which is great. Occasionally she'll check it to see how much she has. But we don't need exactly 15, we need somewhere in that ballpark. So you've got about 2 grams there. So she knows she needs about 7 times what she's already got. So she's just going to keep on adding and adding until she thinks she's gotten pretty close to where she thinks she's going to be. Jen, you're going to go ahead and grease the bottom of that condenser there. We're just using the condenser and that's it. That might be a little bit too much. Could you please wipe that off with the, the paper towel? There we go. Yeah, just a small line is generally all we need around there. I think that'll be fine. That'll work. Okay. So don't uh, don't set that up yet. What you can do though is go ahead and plug in the, uh, the tubing to the condenser before we put it on. That's always a good idea, I think. So what's going to happen is the one that goes in the sink will be on the top and the one that is attached to the faucet will be on the bottom. And you'll notice it's not attached yet to the round bottom flask, which I think is the best way to handle this. Now we're just going to lay that down on the bench and await the opportunity to put it into the round bottom flask. Would you please hold that up? Jen, there you go. All right, now we've got 100 mils of methylene chloride. Would you please grab that? Okay. So what I want you to do, Jen, is pour the solid into the flask here. You know she's using a powder funnel there to do that. Now what she's going to do, she's going to use the methylene chloride here to rinse, to rinse the flask. There we go, rinse the flask. There we go. We don't really need boiling stones for this. The nutmeg is enough of a boiling stone for this. So go ahead and go ahead and add all the methylene chloride. So it's hundred, about hundred mils there. Doesn't have to be exactly a hundred. Anywhere in that ballpark is fine. All right, they've already got their condenser set up. It's already got the tubing in it. Now we're going to go ahead and attach the flask. No, no, attach the flask to the clamp first. There we go. So you'll notice that for a reflux setup, what we do is we clamp the neck of the flask. We clamp the neck of the flask into the clamp like that. And now they're going to put the condenser on top. Now it's already been greased as well down the bottom. Now you don't put a we don't put a keck clip on. It's going to hold on by gravity. Right. Okay. You weren't aware of the gravity of the situation, were you? Well, don't worry, but... Alright. So now what they're going to do is raise up... Raise up the mantle here. Make sure it goes right in. Now this is methylene chloride, so it doesn't boil at a very high temperature. It boils about 40 degrees. So a setting of about 3 should be sufficient. And Cassie, would you turn on the condenser, please? That's so the way this is arranged is the water goes in the bottom and comes out the top and you'll see it fill the condenser. There we go. And Cassidy's going to check the flow of that and make sure it's not Niagara Falls. How's it look? Okay, good. All right. And that way it will be fine. So now what we're going to do is we're going to wait for it to boil and then start timing our 30 minutes from when it starts to boil. It won't take long to boil because it is methylene chloride and it will boil quickly. Now the idea behind the whole extraction business here is that the trimeristin is soluble in dichloromethane. 
but it's going to be more soluble in hot dichloromethane, which is why we're heating it. And it will also boil and move things around, which will also stir it around, and that will help to get the, get the trimeristin extracted as well. But uh, we do have to wait for it to boil before we start timing that 30 minutes. So this is what it looks like when it's boiling, and it will sit like this for 30 minutes while it extracts. Okay. All right, go ahead and turn it off now. And what I want you to do is lower it, and then take the heat right away from it. So it's no longer underneath it. Because if while it's underneath it, it would still be boiling anyway. But leave the, leave the, the condenser on there, on the top. But take that right away, there we go. Now the idea is that we're gonna wait for this to stop boiling and then we will filter it. Now we're ready to filter it. So Jen, show, show the show that to the camera here. Now it's fairly, fairly cool. I mean, it, it was methylene chloride and you can, you can actually pick it up and you can touch it. So even after it's finished boiling, it's not too bad. Now is, they, is the book and funnel, sorry, is the, the vacuum on? Sorry? Yeah, turn the vacuum on, please. Now, we don't want to use water here to wet this down with. So what uh, Jen's going to do, she's actually going to take a little bit of liquid off the... No, not that liquid. Liquid off the top here. She's going to use that to do to wet the filter paper down. And there is filter paper in there. In fact, I'll show, I'll show on the camera what the filter paper looks like in here. There we go. You see, it's the filter paper just covers all the holes there. If we don't have that, then we'll be in trouble. Now, Jen is going to go ahead and she's going to pour it in and she's going to filter it. Now, we don't necessarily have to get all the solid in there because what we're really interested in here is this liquid that's collecting in the bottom. Now, you'll notice how this was set up. It was clamped. This flask would have been very clean and this needs to be here as well to make sure that it doesn't fall over. Now Jen is going to rinse this out with a little bit of dichloromethane that she has here as well. Now if any of the nutmeg particles go through to the bottom then we can use a... would you mind bringing this over? Then we can use this kind of setup here and filter it into our round bottom flask. I don't think we're going to need to do that today because it looks like we've got everything we need. So go ahead and filter that. Now remember we're not interested in the solid so once we've got that liquid we can turn it off. All right, go ahead and turn it off please. And we can go ahead and pour that into our pour that into our round bottom flask. All right, so we've got a clean, dry, round bottom flask here. If you don't have a clean, dry flask, you can always rinse it out with acetone first. And you don't need to worry if there's a little bit of acetone left in there because the acetone will evaporate when we put it on the rotary evaporator anyway. But this does need to be a clean, dry flask. Just as, lo just as much as that Buchner funnel there needed to be clean and dry as well. We don't, need, we don't want any water at all through here. Is that alright, Jen? Yes, that's great. Alright, she's having some trouble getting that off. Uh, no, would you please make sure you, you do take that off? There we go, alright. Now make sure that you point the part of it up. That, yes, there we go. That's good. And we're just going to put that into the brown bottom flask. All right, now it's ready to evaporate. Now it needs to be evaporated down to 30 mils of what it was. Okay, so we're going to now evaporate this down to 30 mils. So Tina, would you lift up the 30 mil sample here, please? Just put it in front of the camera. And you can see that that's the level we want to get it to in the flask. That'll be about 30 mils. 
Okay, put that back. All right, uh, Jen, go ahead and put this on the rotary evaporator. She's going to use a blue clip here, a cat clip, to hook it on as well. Big part goes around the big part, little part goes around the little part. You'll notice she's holding on to the flask until the vacuum takes. Now the vacuum hasn't taken yet. You got to there. You go. Now turn the turn that knob 90 degrees towards you. That's good. Now you can hear the change in pitch. That vacuum is taken. So go ahead and and turn on the spinner. And now she's going to lower it into the water. So it goes vacuum on. Then turn the knob 90 degrees. Turn on the spinner. Put it in the water. To take it off, we reverse that. Now what Jen's going to do is at some point she's going to turn off the spinner and she's going to lift it out and then she's going to compare it with the level that's in the flask down below there. So let's take it out of the water and see where we're at just to get an idea. Okay, you can see, could you please put the, put the other one beside it just for reference? So as you can see we're no, nowhere near 30 mils yet so we're going to take that down and continue with the process. But that gives you an idea. You can't do this just by leaving it sit because you won't be able to see the level. Occasionally you're going to have to stop it and pull it out of the water to see what the level's like. It shouldn't take very long though. All right, let's lift it up. We'll uh, try it one more time here. Okay, stop the spinner. Let's put it beside it. Looks pretty good to me. All right, so it looks like it's 30 mils. Okay, Jen, go ahead and make sure the spinner's off. Now, hold on to the flask and then turn off the vacuum, okay? And then turn off that and then you can take off the flask. So we've got our concentrated solution here and it's been evaporated down to 30 mils. Jen, go ahead and pour it into the Erlenmeyer flask, please. And okay, use the methanol to rinse out the flask here. All right, and use it to rinse the funnel as well. Now you're going to, you have to use it, don't you need to stir it in with a stirring rod? You're going to add it fairly slowly here and you're going to stir it with the stirring rod while you're adding it. And what we're trying to do here is see if we can get some crystals out of here. And if we add it fairly slowly like this, then we're going to likely get some crystals. Now, if we don't get crystals, it's not the end of the world. We'll be able to put this into the ice and the crystals will come out of solution. But if we add the methanol all at once, we're in danger of stuff coming out as an oil. We don't want that to happen. Yeah, so that's looking pretty good now. You need, still need to add, the, add all the methanol. But what's going to happen is Jen's going to finish adding that methanol, then she's going to go ahead and stick it in the ice bath. Right. So we, you can see that Jen is continuing to add that. You can see that there is some solid forming, which is good. Yeah, that's looking pretty nice. Now, not all the solids going to come out right now. It, a lot of it will come out once we put it in the ice. Yeah, since you've got solid there now, Jen, you can just pour the rest in. That's good. All right, give it a bit of a stir, and now just put this into the ice container. You can leave the leave the leave the thing in there. There we go. Now stick it in the ice, please. So this is going to stay in the ice for about five to seven minutes and we'll see what it looks like at that point. All right, this has been sitting in the ice for five minutes so go ahead and take it out please Cassie. Let's take a look at it. As you can see there's a nice 
nice lot of solid there sitting in the flask. It's very good. All right, let's go over here. We'll we'll, uh, we'll filter it now. Okay. All right, so you can see that Cassidy is removing the ice from the outside, which I think is a smart play. All right, now what she's going to do is she's going to uh, Tina, go ahead and turn on the vacuum, please. Now, Cassie's going to just put a little bit of liquid in just to wet down the filter paper that's in there. All right, that's good. And that will make sure that the filter paper sucks down onto the bottom. Now she's going to go ahead and swirl and dump. She's going to try and get as much as she can into that filter without leaving any in the flask or as little as possible in the flask. Go ahead. There we go. You she's, she's, see she's pouring it fairly quickly. Now in this case, we're not interested in the liquid. We're interested in the solid that's going to be in the flask. Go ahead and use your one-to-one dichloromethane methanol mixture here. And she's going to use that to rinse out the flask here. So that was just a five mils of methanol, five mils of dichloromethane in there. So she's just trying to get as much of the solid as she can. She's just going to do one rinse. Alright, that's good. Now this has just methyl, methanol or methylene chloride on here, so it doesn't really have to sit in here for very long to dry. Maybe just a couple of minutes. And then it can be transferred onto this weighed watch glass here. Let's go take a look at what the solid looks like. See, there it is, very nice. Do you want to get a spatula and just put a spatula in there and just sort of roll around a little bit so we can see what it looks like? Okay, it looks really good. All right. So we're just going to leave that sit on there for a couple of minutes. Then we're going to transfer it to the weighed watch glass and we'll be good to go. All right, so that's what it looks like on the watch glass. We're going to actually put it in a beaker because it's like we're going to be doing something with it next week. So Cassie's just going to go ahead and put that in. Now, she could use a solids funnel if she wanted, but it looks like she's going to live dangerously and just go ahead and <laughs> take it off the watch glass and put it into the beaker. And we can store the beaker in a drawer or something until next week.